tonight in Nine News, farewell to the King. The shock death of Shane Warne, gone at just 52 from a suspected heart attack in Thailand. The loss that we're all trying to wrap our heads around is huge. Stunned fans pay their respects at the MCG. He's a legend. I've, I've watched him all my life. A couple of his gone. And the ultimate tribute, the Great Southern Stand, to be renamed in his honour. That's a hat trick to Shane Warne. A magician on the pitch, we remember the highs and lows of an incredible career and a character off the field, memories of an Australian legend. Was that a flipper? Yeah. Sorry I'm late. This is Melbourne's Nine News with Alicia Loxley. Good evening. Cricket fans the world over are in stunned disbelief tonight following the sudden death of Shane Warne. The 52-year-old was found unconscious in his room on a retreat in Thailand. Considered the game's best leg spinner, the father of three was a showman, a commentator and a larrikin who couldn't escape controversy on or off the field. But to most Australians, he was simply Warney. Damien Ryan begins our coverage. OK, we are having some technical problems, but we will come back to that. But it's unlikely, of course, we will ever see another sporting figure like Shane Warne. While his cricket record speaks for itself, his career was punctuated by controversies. Invariably, he'd bounce back, his reputation unscathed, support from the Australian public unwavering. Tony Jones looks back on his extraordinary career. It's 1992, and who could have imagined this chubby bowler from the Bayside suburbs would become one of the greatest cricketers in the game's history? I just feel very proud, and it's just a privilege to play. But, um, you know, I, I didn't never really expect it to play. The cap might not have been the best of fits, but Shane Warne would comfortably go on to wear it in 145 tests. The first against India at the SCG, a less than glorious debut, taking one for 150. You don't realise how much it is, you know, until you've actually gone through it, how nerve-wracking it is and what it actually feels like. It's a tremendous feeling. Oh, he's bowled him. It wasn't until the following summer, when Warren stepped onto the MCG for the Boxing Day test against the West Indies, that he would truly announce himself as a future star. Seven for 52. And there it is, a great victory for Australia and a tremendous day's work for Shane Warren. Having had a taste of the adulation and the newfound fame, there would be no turning back. There we go. Fleming took the last one. Merv Hughes before him. Yes! Oh, he's got him. He's got him. Yes, he has. He's got him. It's a hat trick. Yes, he's got him. He's gone. It's a hat trick. That's a hat trick to Shane Warne. A great moment in his career. He was like a magician, and we were mesmerised by his trickery. All of our coaching things that we do in Victoria, the easiest way to do it is all we do is you have two hand fingers down, two up, and you sort of put the ball in there. And that's how you... It's a bit bigger than normal. But that's the basic sort of grip. But stardom brings scrutiny, and few sportsmen have achieved such greatness or generated such controversy. He lived in a fishbowl, and at times the waters got very murky. I've got nothing to say, thank you. His cricket made him a back page regular. His antics off the field gave him his quota of front pages. While some were mere mishaps, texting, smoking and general yahooing, other controversies were far more serious career-threatening. In 1995, he and Mark Waugh faced the media amid revelations they'd passed on pitch and weather conditions to an illegal bookmaker three years earlier. I deeply regret this action off the field and wish to state that playing for Australia is the greatest honour I've had in my cricketing career. Eight years later, Warren was sent home from South Africa having returned a positive drugs test. He'd taken a diuretic and a bid to lose weight, an error of judgement that would see him banned from the game for a year. Absolutely devastated. Few thought Shane Warren was an actual drug cheat, and although his reputation did take a battering, he set about repairing it once the ban had expired. I think, like anything, when it's taken away from you from 12 months, you realise how much you miss it. His comeback series was against Sri Lanka. In three tests, he took 26 wickets, including two 10-wicket hauls. 
Warney was back. He was again rewriting history. But off the field, more trouble loomed, this time marital problems. In June of 2005, Warn split with wife Simone. We've just got to work out what we both want and which way we're going to go. They had three young children, Warn dedicating whatever time he had to them. There was a true insight into his parenting in this documentary titled Shane, which premiered only a week ago on Amazon Prime. Obviously, Mum was around more because she was based in Melbourne, but Dad's job took him overseas, and nothing can change that. That was just it. I just remember always seeing him on TV instead of, like, face-to-face -face because he was always travelling a lot. It was personal stuff, raw and riveting. He's going down as one of the greatest ever cricketers of all time. So I can appreciate those sacrifices he made when we were younger for him to be Shane Warne, who he is today. Whatever personal issues Warne was dealing with, there was never a hint of evidence that it impacted on his cricket. On a summer's night in 1999, he turned peacemaker when the MCG crowd turned feral. It's very sad. It'd be very sad if the game doesn't go on. In the years leading up to his retirement at the end of the 06-07 Ashes series, he continued to chalk up the milestones. Bold him. Bowl him this time. Even when he did leave the test arena for the final time, Warren wasn't completely lost to the game. He was brought in to captain the Melbourne Stars in the Big Bash. Mic'd up, he took us into his office. He might be trying to shake the sweet one after that first one, or maybe he go inside out again a bit harder, so I might try and slide one in there. Fast. He mostly gave us an insight into his cricketing genius. There was the odd occasion, however, when he flipped his lid. Grab some more people. <laughs> you, it stood to reason that Warren's wit, wisdom and general charm would draw him to the commentary box. You, 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 you do a mean, Greggy. Yes, I don't, my bad. Here we go. Yes, one of the Tuesday. From Nine's Wide World of Sports to Sky Sports in the UK and Fox Sports here in Australia. In a media sense, Warren was a wanted man from head to toe. There's only one thing that really worries me, and that's hair loss. He even had his own night show. His mates were his guests. Warning, I don't have to say this, but <laughs> you, you were probably his favourite. He, he loved, he thought the world of you as, uh, as, as so many people do. Warren's TV show reel also included a stint on Kath and Kim. Was that a flipper? Yeah. Sorry I'm late. I've been practising a bit of cricket as a surprise for you, Sharon. Shane Warne was a once-in-a-lifetime cricketer, and having endured a string of controversies, he had no time for political correctness. It denied him the one box he so desperately wanted to tick, captaining his country. For all his fame and fortune, Warne remained a man of the people, and we, the people, couldn't get enough of him. I liked loud music, I was smoked, I drank, and um, I bowled a bit of leg spin, you know, that was sort of me. Tony Jones, Nine News. Returning now to Damien Ryan's story for you on how the shock news of Shane Warne's passing was revealed. A superstar in the game of cricket. Got him. Clean bowled him. The end was more like a Hollywood tragedy. Shane Warne, the man who thrilled millions, alone, unresponsive in an island villa, a world away from any cricket ground. When we arrived, this ambulance officer said, we saw the victim lying on the lower floor. Police on the island of Koh Samui were called to the Samajana villas at around five o'clock yesterday afternoon after one of Warne's friends knocked on his door. He went in there and said, come on, we're late, you're going to be late and then realised that um, something was wrong and uh, turned him over, gave him CPR mouth-to-mouth. -mouth. That was lasted about 20 minutes. But he could not be saved. At 1am East Coast time, the statement which rebounded around the globe. It is with great sadness we advise that Shane Keith Warne passed away of a suspected heart attack in Koh Samui, Thailand, today, Friday, 4th of March. Shane was found unresponsive in his villa and despite the best efforts of medical staff, he could not be revived. A tragedy which left the cricket world reeling. Tough day for everyone all around the globe. We've lost a true hero, legend and icon of the game in Shane Warne. They pressed pause on an historic test match in Pakistan 
as the Australian cricket captain faced up to one of the sport's darkest days. The loss that we're all trying to wrap our heads around is huge. We all grew up watching Warney, idolising him. We all had posters on his wall, um, had his earrings. At 52, the king of spin dead. And his fans in mourning. I woke up and I couldn't believe it. I was in shock. They descended on Warney's second home, the MCG. The scene of Boxing Day heroics, a hat trick, a record 700 test wicket, and now a stand in his name. We will be renaming the Great Southern Stand, the SK Warn Stand, and we'll be doing that as soon as we possibly can. That will go with his statue, today a shrine for cricket lovers who were hit for six. Saw it early in the morning, really early. Just haven't been asleep. Yeah. Just four days ago, Warren announced on Instagram he was on a health kick. Operation Shred had started. The goal by July is to get back to this shape from a few years ago. And that's why he was in Thailand at this wellness retreat. Two days ago, he posted, Good night from Koh Samui. His last message on social media yesterday, Warney remembering another cricketing great, Rod Marsh, who died the same way. Rod cared deeply about cricket and gave so much, especially to Australia and England players, RIP mate. Today it was cricket royalty lining up to honour the greatest ever spin bowler. I just loved him. I, I really loved the fact that I, I knew this guy as a slow bowler, but also as a character in the game and as a mate. One test captain after another. Hard to put this into words. I first met him when I was 15 at the academy. He gave me my nickname, the greatest bowler I ever played with or against. Just something about him that, um, you know, is engaging, you know. Um, uh, he just gets you talking and, and you just like him straight away. Michael Clark was not just a teammate, but best friend. King, he called him, and this is so unfair, RIP buddy. I think Warren's the best bowler there's ever been. Not too many players lasted five hours against our attack with Warren in it. And with Glenn McGrath at the other end, it spelt Australian dominance. There never seems to be a dull moment. He was a great mate and a loving father. The highlight of my cricketing career was to wicketkeep to Shane Warren. Merv Hughes, I simply don't have the words. And a salute from a Prime Minister in isolation. A good mate, a dad and a fellow Australian. Rest in peace, Shane Warne. Thanks, mate. And back where it all began as an 11-year-old, Shane Warne, the Sandringham junior who played for St Kilda. Today, black arm bands and a minute silence for a suburban leg spinner who mesmerised the cricketing world. He was always had time for everyone. Lovely bloke, you know, he was a larrikin, but everyone loved him. There were more tributes at the Sydney Cricket Ground where Warren's test career began, long before these young fans were born. I was at the Sydney Ashes test and I got a fist bump from Shane Warne. Shane Warne's family has said they're in shock and in need of privacy. Foreign affairs officials are now en route to the island of Koh Samui to assist in the repatriation of his body. It's hoped the father of three will be home in a matter of days. And then we'll begin the official farewell to a cricketer whose passing was as unexpected as any ball he ever bowled. Damien Ryan, Nine News. And Reid Butler is at the MCG tonight where there's been a steady outpouring of grief. Reid, as we just heard, Warren's memory will now live on at the ground. When will the stand be renamed? Alicia, it will happen in the immediate future, perhaps the coming days. And for Warney, there could be no greater honour. Immortalised here at the MCG, essentially becoming part of the stadium that played host to so many of his career highlights, including his famous 700th wicket. The Great Southern Stand behind me with close to 50,000 seats for spectators will be no more and instead will forever be known as the SK Warn Stand. We do know there are plans for a big redevelopment of that particular part of the stadium in the coming years, but we are assured that that name will continue. Now, outside the MCG at the Shane Warne statue there, that is where tributes are continuing to grow tonight. Uh, there are beautiful flowers and cards, but there are also things like slices of pizza and cans of VV and even the 
odd pack or two of cigarettes. All very warning and all helping bring a little smile to the face of fans, very sad fans, who've gathered here today. Now here is the uh, Sports Minister Martin Pakula speaking about the uh, renaming of the Great Southern Stand and then some of those fans we met earlier. I can think of uh, no finer tribute to the greatest cricketer this state's ever produced. It was very sad. Um, straight away I, I rang up a couple of my cricket friends to tell them and um, yeah, they were as sad as I was. Oh mate, he's a, he's a legend. I've, I've watched him all my life. Um, he's, oh, no, just can't describe it in any words. I can't believe he's gone. Now the Premier has also offered the Warren family a state funeral and it would likely be held here at the MCG and what a fitting send off Alicia, one last showing for the champion that made this stadium his own. Absolutely. Reid Butler there at the MCG. Now let's get the latest from Thailand and here's the Ages Southeast Asia correspondent Chris Barrett who's in Koh Samui. I'm here outside Bopud Police Station in Koh Samui and it's here where the shock death of Shane Warne is being investigated. Police say they're not treating his death as suspicious, but they're expecting his friends who found him unconscious in his villa yesterday afternoon to come along here today to provide some more information. Warren's body was taken to a government hospital last night on the other side of the island, and they're waiting for advice from either police or from Warren's family about whether or not to conduct an autopsy. Meanwhile, at the villa where Warren was found, about 10 minutes north of here, the security guarding the entrance and expected to remain that way for some time. Well, away from the cricket pitch, Shane Warne was larger than life. It seemed everyone wanted to be mates with Warney, from Hollywood to royalty and rock and roll. Mark Burrows reports. It was the ball that announced the name Shane Keith Warne to the United Kingdom. And he's done it. English legend Mike Gadding, bamboozled. He always said to me, he said, thanks, mate, for missing it. I said, I didn't mean to, I can assure you. The ball of the century was the birth of a legend. And obviously, as a kid growing up, was a massive idol of mine. Someone who wanted to emulate uh, the way he could win a game on his own. The English playing a warm-up match in Antigua, West Indies. The team stopping mid-match for a minute's silence when news of Warney's death broke. I'm afraid we have some... Devastating, tragic news. Arguably the greatest spin bowler in cricket history. Shane Warne has died uh, at the age of 52. Warney was treated as royalty in Britain, especially as a cricketing prince who stole an English princess. His relationship with actress Liz Hurley, a dream for the press. When will you be seeing Shane, Liz? Proposing on James Packer's boat with a $60,000 sapphire ring. The couple never made it the distance. And it was the happiest time of my life. I was madly in love with Elizabeth and we're still friends now. Warney's leg breaks were one thing, but his tsunami of character drew some of the world's biggest names into his orbit. Today, from Ed Sheeran, the world keeps taking incredible people away. I'll bloody miss you, mate. Absolutely gutted. A cricket mad Rolling Stone. Mick Jagger, I'm so saddened. He brought such joy to the game and was the greatest spin bowler ever. His star power was incredible. Australian rules football, that's all I ever want to do as a kid. I know. Right, yeah, so your life, know. in a sense, has been a failure. <laughs> a close friendship with Chris Martin of Coldplay. Warney even played the harmonica with them at a stadium show. From Russell Crowe, having a hard time accepting it. Genius player, grand company, loyal friend. Sir Elton John. Shane was a magical bowler and such huge fun. Kylie Minogue, Valet Warney, the one and only King of Spin. Even Fergie, the Duchess of York. I'm so sad to hear about Shane Warne. He was an immense character. And talk about rock and roll. He knew everybody. Hmm. You, you, you know, people say, oh, I've, got, I've got his number here, I'll give him a ring. Male or female, he had the lot. Just like in Australia, throughout the cricketing world, it was pure disbelief. From India, Sachin Tendulkar, shocked, stunned and miserable. Virat Kohli, I cannot process the passing of this great of our sport, greatest to turn the cricket ball. The West Indies, Sir Viv Richards, there are no words to describe what I feel right now, a huge loss for cricket. Brian Lara, 
I literally don't know how to sum up this situation. My friend is gone. Pakistan, Wazim Akram, I am shocked and extremely sad to hear about the sudden death of my friend Warning. Wakar Yunus, the biggest superstar of my generation, gone. Goodbye, legend. It hasn't sunk in, to be honest, and I don't think it's going to sink in for, for quite some time. Then there was his spin bowling nemesis, the only man to take more test wickets than Warning, Murali from Sri Lanka. I was asking the people, is it true or it's uh, fake news? So that kind of a uh, thing, and it was shocking. The world is going to miss him because the f cricket fraternity. So very sad. Warney was enemy number one for the Barmy Army. With sledges like, he's fat, he's round, he bounces on the ground. Today, the Pommy supporters simply said, we only wished he was English. A man who, you know, was so, had such vitality and full of energy and life. I was totally stunned. I don't think I'd ever been more shocked in my life. England is a country Shane Warne loved, and it's clear it loved him back. A solitary candle left outside Lords on a day when it felt like the world stopped spinning. Well, Lords here was a happy hunting ground for Shane Warne. He never lost a test match here. And the tributes continue to flow this morning. The UK's Daily Telegraph had no less than eight articles. One of the best was by former English captain Michael Vaughan, who said Warney was a normal guy who could do incredible things. And how about this for a headline in The Sun? I smoked, I drank, I bowled a bit. He even pushed Vladimir Putin off the front page. Just an amazing tribute. And this has been flowing right across the English newspapers and media today. Mark Burrows reporting there from London. All right, ahead for you in the day's other news. The damage from the blitz on the nuclear Ukraine nuclear plant revealed as television crews come under fire. And the Mud Army 2.0 gets to work after Brisbane's devastating floods. Right, Clint Stanaway is here now with a look ahead at tonight's sport. Hi Alicia, thanks so much for that. Tonight in sport, Warney to grace the MCG forever. Tributes continue to roll in, we'll cross live for the latest. But over in Pakistan, the show, it must roll on. Plus a roaring win for the Tigers, but there's a worry or two. And the Demon drags the Aussies back from the brink. There'll be a permanent nod to Australia's greatest spin bowler inside the MCG with the Great Southern Stand to be renamed after Shane Warne's death. Reid Butler has the latest on this story for us live. Reid, good evening. How quickly will this all happen? Clint, we know the Premier wants to make this happen as soon as possible. He's been on the phone today to the MCG Trust as well as been in contact with the uh, Shane Warne's family. So watch this space. The official name change will likely happen very, very soon. Now, it's suburban cricket grounds across Melbourne today. There were moving scenes, but particularly at the St Kilda Cricket Club. That is where Warney first played as a junior. Today, there, there was a minute silence as well as a guard of honour. Really moving stuff. Uh, we also know that uh, Warney uh, was a devout Saints supporter. And tonight, for St Kilda's practice match against Essendon, players will be wearing black armbands. So, Clint, just a few tributes. Uh, we are expecting many more, of course, in the next few days and weeks. Clint? Reid Butler at the MCG tonight. Thanks so much. There's been tributes to on the subcontinent where Australia is doing its best to focus on the first test against Pakistan. A review blunder proving really costly for the Pat Cummins team and his men with the hosts one down for 302 at lunch on day two. Ed and Woolley reports. A world away in Pakistan, the shock and grief was obvious on the faces of the Australians as they paused to remember the spin king. Nathan Lyon particularly hard hit. For Pat Cummins, the challenge then was to channel everything that made Shane Warne great. Everyone knew Shane, but, you know, some people knew him better than others. So, um, yeah, just, uh, yeah, here for each other as we process it all. The short ball was the go-to plan early on day two. Cummins and the Quicks toiling unsuccessfully in tough conditions. Chances overall few and far between. Oh, here we go. There's a big, big noise on that time. Despite their excitement, the Aussies decided against a review which appeared to show an edge. The skipper's reaction said it all. Yeah, disappointment. A short time later, Imam Al-Haq passed 150. Meanwhile, a career best from Rachel Haynes at the Women's World Cup. Absolutely brilliant. 
One of the very best hundreds you'll see. Haynes blasted 130 from 131 balls to help Australia to a total of three for 310. England a short time ago was five for 232. Leggy Alana King delivering her own tribute with a delivery that would have made Warney proud. Ayrton Woolley, Nine News. The hot nights as well, Alicia. That is good news. All right, Maddie, thank you for that. And that is Nine News this Saturday. Deb Knight is next with a special edition of A Current Affair. We leave you with a look back at the life of the King of Spin. For now, good night.